This website is operated by Sasoy LLC, which is not affiliated in any way with Central Park in New York City or the City of New York or the Central Park Conservancy. Welcome, folks, to the Central Park Long Border. We're going to kick the apple today. Hey, guys, and welcome to the Central Park Long Border video. We are going to go up and down and then up and back down again. And one of the best places to go up and down and up and down uh, with a little bit of agility skill and also some commuting skills. Remember that switch kicking a longboard is a transport sport. It's recreation that becomes transportation. As you see here, there's two sports illustrated very well. The lead athlete there is switch kicking. And in the back and to the sides, we see cycling. So uh, right behind this athlete is a cyclist who is out for a little performance, uh, dressed in Lycra. And that's the same as this athlete here, which is dressed in a Lycra kit and demonstrating the highest performance uh, available for switch kicking. And folks, please don't confuse performance with racing. Performance and high performance means perfect and proper execution of kinetic propulsion. That basically means you're doing your stroke cleanly and as effectively as possible. So you're extracting as much energy effectively, both athletes there doing the same thing, um, as you possibly can. Racing is racing and please don't confuse it with performance, although when you do race, you want to execute a high performance. So. Switch kick is just uh, pretty much the same as speed skating. So imagine speed skating, inline speed skating, or speed skating on ice. This is a very similar sport, but you are going to travel on one skate, only one skate, but you're going to be replicating a very similar skate pattern over the center line. So you wanna be dropping the shoulder on the opposing side of the kick leg. So as the leg kicks, you want to drop the shoulder on the other side and have your nose over your knee and your knee over your toes. And that's what gives skaters the ability to glide. So if you're not gliding and you're leaning over towards the side where your leg is kicking, you are essentially pushing wood. That's what you're doing. So you're not skating until you can momentarily glide on one leg. That's what skaters do. They glide on one leg, then they have a weight transfer through their hips over to the other leg, and then they glide on it and back and forth rather quickly as opposed to as we're doing here and you're seeing switch kicking happening on cadences as high as five and six, sometimes a little higher and perhaps on this video we'll be showing some ones and some twos and we've made good work of coming up this bridge here and it's paved uh, throughout the middle. Uh, the down ramp on both sides uh, is made of paved concrete so that uh, the lines are rigid and that's so that it'll give a little more traction during those icy periods uh, of the year. Otherwise there's pavement on this bridge and it's nice and smooth and offers a great, a great um, opportunity to get yourself across from New York City over into Long Island City, the Queens area. So as you can see, this is heel to toe switch kicking and that's what we teach here at Central Park Long Border. More or less, you might as well be teaching speed skating. And please don't get confused with those words, speed and performance. You could be executing this exactly as well as this athlete, only at slightly so slower speeds and doing it at the same performance. Absolutely. So speed skating just happens to have been called speed skating because that's, that's the name they gave it. They could have called it performance skating. It would have been the same thing. Um, so don't focus too much on speed. Always focus on performance and technique. So those things are learned over time and slowly. And now, folks, we're going to get into a little workout here uh, that Dan Bowen actually innovated as he began to learn his switch stance 
Uh, we're coming down the downhill side, uh, going towards Queens now and hitting those expansion joints. And as you can see, we've learned to switch stance. Um, and at the same time, we're adding a little bit of fitness load. So to be able to be switching and to then uh, dip down um, will cause you uh, to work and that work is good so if you can do some physical work at the same time that you are engaging your balance of course you'll be developing strength endurance and balance and that's a lovely thing that all skating can produce for you so out of all the field sports hockey is the one that produces strength endurance and balance during play no less so if you're into hockey and you want to cross train switch kicking is a very well uh, suited cross training modality uh, it will make you a more well-rounded uh, hockey player hockey players of course need to activate uh, the mechanism in all 360 degrees and this kind of uh, bilateral limb development is going to be very beneficial for some cross training so if you're a hockey player and you are three to four miles away from work definitely consider uh, getting some skill set on a board and um, mixing it into your recreation and your commuting. So we're headed down here towards towards the end. We're going to put in a couple more dips. And as you can see, the Central Park Longboarder board is incredibly stable. The device is made for stability 100%. It's basically a motor mount. You're the motor, and the idea is to remain stable. Here's a little cadence braking. Cadence braking is just kicking in reverse. So you're going to switch legs and you're going to operate the braking the same. Folks, we hope you've enjoyed this. Down to this side, we're going to flip around now. We're going to go back up and come in from Queens. So now we're coming in from Queens, Long Island City, and we're going to go up and over the bridge um, again. So folks, if you are new to switch kicking, um, be always mindful that you need to take care of the safety of others first. Of course, yourself is very important, but the safety of others is tantamount. Uh, very important. It is the most important thing. Do not be a risk to others. When you start any outdoor sports, whether that's climbing or flat water stand-up paddle or skiing, alpine skiing, and you have your responsibilities to those around you and being out on bridges and crossing bridges with commuting traffic is something you should take seriously and you should make good assessment of your skill sets and if you feel as if you are a threat to others stay away from people until your skill sets have matured and you're in full control of your device as well as your body do not be a risk to other people so there's a lot of people out here commuting on bicycles we all share the bridge and um, other people should be first and foremost on your mind. So um, if you don't know this bridge, the commuters um, need to stay on the bike lane and then the walkers, pedestrians, stay in the pedestrian lane. So it's pretty tight out here, uh, technically speaking or legally speaking. So one side is full for pedestrians and the other side is full, full on for um, uh, cycles and scooters and uh, small wheel transportation. So as you can see also that pavement there is not pavement, it's actually concrete and those little ridges are going to make you work and that's what's lovely about the 59th Street Bridge is that it's noisy and it is bumpy and you need to focus and it is a good place to have to go over expansion gaps as you just saw so there's a whole skill set involved in all of those things we'll be making some videos to explain how to get yourself over that but of course the board is made and engineered to do that because it has drops it has a three inch drop and therefore the board can be drifted it can be drifted to the front it can be drifted to the rear so when you get over when you want to get over expansion gaps you're just going to drift the front end straight over and have the drop fall right into the back of the heel and you will gain a lot of control and stability uh, on the board. You'll be able to push it and pull it. And if you have a flat deck, it's very challenging to do that because you don't have a stop. So you have to calculate it very well and then lift and lower the foot 
rather quickly and perfectly. There was a drift to the rear. As you see, we go straight to the rear. We calculate nothing. All we do is wait until the drop runs into the back of the heel and stops. So if you're gonna be switch kicking a board with drops, is very, very, very effective uh, at, at, at manipulating or getting over terrain and also at kicking heel to toe. So this is uh, elite expert uh, heel to toe kicking with drifting. Uh, nobody should expect to be doing any of this uh, all uh, very, too, very soon at these kinds of speeds, especially on bridges. Um, so you'll want to be looking out for our videos and, and uh, beginning to learn the basics. And the basics are how slow can you go? So how slow can you go and perform the stroke um, at its most uh, efficient form? Because you cannot accelerate any of this until you are able to go slow perfectly. Once you can perfectly go slow, you can begin to accelerate it. There's a little expansion gap, probably the biggest one on the bridge, and um, you can drift over it if you're going slow. If you're going fast enough, you can catch it at a little bit of an angle. You must respect those expansion gaps. So uh, material expands and contracts in winter and summer, and of course that's what those are about, so the bridge doesn't yank apart. Uh, but you must be respectful of those expansion gaps. They are big, they are wide, and uh, you need to be respectful of them. And as you can see, we're switching lanes here and there, and obviously you can see clear across the bridge and up the road, but when there's pedestrian traffic in that pedestrian lane, they own it, it's theirs, and you need um, to make sure that you give it to them. So believe it or not, uh, lane on the right that you see there, that is oncoming and returning uh, traffic uh, for wheeled wheeled vehicles. So if there's pedestrians over there on a pedestrian lane, well, you got to get yourself over there and share a very narrow pathway for those on wheels who are coming and going. As you can see, those pedestrians have the right of way there and it was given to them. So we're headed towards the center of this bridge now. Uh, these are very interesting pictures always to see the 59th Street Bridge. Um, and to see uh, the island uh, over there uh, to your left, very pretty pictures and it hasn't seemed like a train has come through so it's probably not too noisy there right now and we're just going to show you a little bit of switching here uh, once again without the dips. So that dip workout is sensational folks, keep it in mind once you can begin to um, switch carp and uh, here's a little bit of cadence breaking. This side is steeper going down and um, we want to keep our speed in check before we arrive uh, to the crux part, uh, most challenging part of this, um, of this descent, which is where the pavement will meet the concrete. There's an expansion joint, there it is, and also a tiny little bit of blind spot. You can't really see what's coming up on you. And then here comes some cyclists, so it's very important to always be able to hold your line, be predictable be very predictable for those behind you. Although the people behind you, um, you've got right away. So whatever's whatever's in front of you, you need to make sure that you don't hit. So those folks just came right around, gave a little heads up, and as simple as that, everybody shares the road. Here's a little bit of cadence breaking, a lot more cadence breaking on this side. This descent is a heck of a lot faster. We're gonna take the sweeping 180 and we'll be done with this video. We hope you've enjoyed it and uh, you'll tune in for the next one. And we're all about global rolling, switch kicking, folks. See you at the next one. Kick hard, kick often, and kick switch. Visit us at centralparklongboarder.com for lessons and board sales. Learn to switch kick. It's the only thing we teach.